Hello, here we are continuing with the Dr. Daniela Garza, who is a specialist in pediatric surgery, and today we are going to talk about today's topic, which is umbilical hernias. Dr. Daniela, why do these hernias occur? An umbilical hernia is a deficit in the abdominal wall of the baby. What usually happens or occurs is that during the moment of the birthing process, the muscles grow and the belly button does not join up to these muscles, and this is what causes an umbilical hernia. And this is what really causes this is um, a fault in the conjunction of a muscular network, and this is what forms what we call a hernia. What complications does the umbilical hernia have for the baby, and does it represent any danger for the life of the baby? For the life of the baby, it does not uh, present any major problems. Thankfully, and thank God, there aren't very large defects that can occur in umbilical hernias. Usually, these defects are around 3.5 centimeters at the beginning, and what we'll see is that the baby is a bit altered because of the defect, and you will see lots of loose skin around the abdominal area in which the defect is occurring, which is when the mothers take note and are aware of the presence of the hernia. Also, show by having a growth underneath the skin, and that's whenever they begin to get scared a bit. 10% of the population, as we have previously mentioned beforehand, and these deficits, thank God, are very close. They usually close by themselves during the first year, close by themselves in around 90%. And we move them closely up, up until the four years of age, in which the other 10% are closed. In what moment does the corrective treatment occur, and does this treatment present any risk for the baby? The treatment consists of a surgery of the umbilical hernia, as we mentioned before. This is done at the age of four years because, as we mentioned before, the majority of hernias close on their own in the first year. In the first year, it is very important to note the observation of the baby, which is why it is important to go to your doctor's appointment in order for them to determine the size of the defect and to determine if it is closing or if it is opening instead, and if there is need for surgical treatment. If the hernia is opening, we see that the hernia is getting bigger every time and surgical intervention is needed. That's one of the surgical indications. If not, we can wait a year or even four years if it is a very small defect. After it tends to close on its own, sometimes a bit of a, a little bit of in intestines or fat be sucked in and this is what causes the pain. This would be another indication for surgical intervention. The risks that we can find are a bit of bleeding, but as we, this is an ambulatory surgery, they're in and out in the same risk. If, if it is not operated on, if it keeps on growing, there can be some intestines that get stuck in between the muscular tissue. This will cause them to vomit, not be able to defecate, or they can even become blood. And this is some of the signs that the mother must be aware of. What is the prognosis for these babies? And sometimes mothers ask us, will this defect occur again? And what precautions should they be aware of? The prognosis for these babies is actually very well for them. They have a very well style lifestyle after the surgery, if it is needed, or if it closes on its own. Um, so far, there are certain illnesses that will cause or may cause a reoccurrence. These are very rare, but children with liquid in their bellies. These are very rare, but children with liquid in their bellies, such as ascites. This is usually, or this is, can be caused because of an atresia of the bile ducts or hydrocephaly. These are the most common side effects and can cause reoccurrence. Also, in patients with renal problems with insufficiency, which are on dialysis, these are the most prone patients to have a reoccurrence of an umbilical hernia.